Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use building gen blueprints to save specific styles for quick construction of consistent building types. If you already have a package prepared, you can find new building from either the toolbar or the building gen plugin submenu. Once we do this, you can see that we already have the building gen sampler package loaded up by default. In this package, you can see a number of different wall styles included, and you can set the basic parameters like levels, units, and corner bevels. The reference blueprint on the screen will reflect those specifications so you can get a preview of what the building will look like. Under detailed settings, you can assign door and window positions according to your preference. In this case, we only have a single door set, so if we click randomize, it will only place a single door regardless of how many door position sides we have selected. If I hit build with the brick wall style selected, you can see it will generate a beautiful brick building according to our set parameters, matching the blueprint preview. Once your building is built, you can select other styles and hit replace to replace the original style while keeping the construction consistent. In this case, we're using white plaster. We can move our first building to the side and this time construct a building that could be placed on the street corner. New buildings will always be constructed at the scene root. Because we still have the white plaster style selected, the aesthetic will remain consistent. Using styles allows you to quickly construct groups of buildings with matching appearances. One cool feature with Building Gen is the ability to change the style of specific levels. In the Building Gen plugin window, we can click on any of the levels of our existing building and hit Rebuild. It's important to select Keep Structure here if you're only replacing the style and not the entire structure. Here I can select the brick wall style and with the first four selected, hit rebuild to see a combination of these two styles. I can do the same thing for the smaller building as well. You can also quickly duplicate a level by selecting it and hitting duplicate. This will add a level above that contains the same style. Hit delete with the level selected to delete that level. To modify the style within a level, make sure that that level is selected, enable Keep Structure, then change the level type to Top Level and select a different style. You'll see that the middle level will now change its style to Brick, and it will be much shorter as that is how the top level is defined. You can also change the order of your levels as well. We can move the top level that we just created lower down the hierarchy to simulate a sort of mezzanine between the first and second floors. You can use this method to create a bit of variety between your floor heights. Okay, we've looked at how you can use style templates to create variety in your buildings. Let's look next at the individual components of these styles and how you can change their settings. I'll start by creating a simple corner building here. When it's finished, I can go up to Custom Style and you'll see the Custom Style window pop up with all of the individual components of your currently selected style, including materials. There are sections for your wall, floor, and pillar components, as well as first, middle, and top floors. In the regular section, you'll find elements that are meant for 90 degree facing walls, while under cut corner, you'll find elements meant to be used on the corner section of the building. Mousing over the thumbnail will give you a larger preview image. If I want to replace a specific element in the cut corner section, I can select that same element, in this case, I'm selecting the ground floor door section. Currently, it's set to white plaster, but I can switch that to brick and hit build once again to replace only that specific element. If I want to continue on by replacing the window elements above, I need to select that specific element under cut corner. You can also filter the elements to make it easier to find. When we hit build, those sections will now be replaced with brick. We can replace the trim at the top floor by using the same method, just different elements. Use the same process, this time choosing the relevant regular element to replace the trims on the top of the sides. What we can do now is save this specific blueprint configuration so that we can quickly apply it again later. This will save as an iBuilding config file, which we can find in the Content Manager. 
Again, it's recommended to capture a thumbnail of your blueprint for easier recognition. If we double click, it will bring up the new building window once again. We can add an additional corner, and if we build, notice that both corners will maintain that custom brick style we planned out earlier. Using blueprints with slightly different settings, you can quickly and easily create a whole neighborhood of stylishly consistent buildings with slightly different appearances. Okay, lastly, let's look at how you can save and optimize your buildings. You can see in the content manager that the composition of each building is laid out in detail with each individual unit as a child of the main building. You can also select individual elements such as walls, doors, windows, etc. using the middle mouse button. You can easily save a building using the traditional save button in the content manager, where it will save as an iBuilding file. This will be accessible in your library to reload at any time and can still be further customized. If you're confident in your finalized version of the building, you can proceed to optimize it to conserve resources, particularly for large scenes. With the building selected, click on Optimize in the Building Gen window. After you do this, you will no longer be able to edit with Building Gen, and all of the sub-elements will be flattened in the Content Manager. However, the meshes will still all appear under Materials in your Modify panel, where you'll be able to modify them in groups, as I'm doing here with the color of the window frames, by selecting them using the eyedropper tool. After your building is optimized, it will save as a standard prop as opposed to an iBuilding file. You can also optimize a number of buildings at once. Here you can see that I've set up numerous buildings, and upon playback, the FPS is noticeably low. If I multi-select these buildings, I can choose Optimize Building from the toolbar. Now when I play back, we'll get a noticeable increase in performance due to the optimization. Be aware that the optimization is irreversible. That's it for this tutorial guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.